Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper. Today I want to explain how I restored this old rusty axe into a usable camp tool. At the outset, let me confess that I'm still a beginning axe restorer and still make mistakes. Other craftsmen, much better than me, have posted excellent YouTube videos that provide considerable detail about each step. If you want to learn this enjoyable hobby, start by watching Wrangler Star videos and join the Axe Junkies Facebook group. My reasons for posting this video are to show you how easy and economical it is to make a great camp axe and to provide a brief overview of the process from the beginning to the end. About a week ago, a friend stopped by my house and gave me a small axe with a 27-inch handle. He said it had been lying in his barn for several years. I was very happy because several famous camping pioneers such as Moores Kohansky and outdoor craftsmen such as Cody Wrangler Star have praised this particular size axe, and I did not have one in my collection. This size is sometimes called a three-quarter axe, a boy's axe, or a forest axe. After visiting for a while, my friend left, and I began working on the axe. Initial inspection revealed that the head had more rust than any other axe I had ever worked on. A maker's mark was not visible, but faint outlines of phantom bevels were visible. The handle had significant overstrike damage and numerous powder post beetle exit holes. Furthermore, the handle was very dry and brittle. I knew that the axe would require a lot of work, and I was not sure that I had the knowledge or the tools to make it look nice, but I wanted to try. Here is a summary of my process. Work began on Saturday afternoon. My first step was to order a new 28-inch link hickory handle from Amazon.com. It cost $11.71 and would be delivered to my house in four days. Then I used this saw to cut off the old handle flush with the bottom of the head. When I did, I noticed that the upper half of the handle was cracked right down the center. After cutting off the head, I had to remove the remaining wood neck that was lodged inside of the eye. To remove this wood, I first drilled out as much as possible, and then I used a bolt and a hammer to drive out the rest of the wood. This step proved to be more difficult than I expected because the wood seemed to be stuck to the inside of the eye. Then I weighed the head. It weighed two pounds and one ounce. After weighing the head, I placed it and three metal wedges into this plastic ice cream bucket. Then I filled the bucket with white vinegar, enough to cover the head, and allowed it to sit for two days. The vinegar would remove a lot of the rust. On Monday, I removed the head from the vinegar, brushed it with a wire brush to remove loose rust, and removed caked rust with a file. At that time, I noticed a faint maker's mark, but I was unable to read it. So I took photos of the head, posted them on Axe Junkie's Facebook page, and asked members to help me identify it. Five members quickly responded, and all agreed that it was a keen cutter. Nick and Jamie also provided some interesting background information about this maker. This photo shows what the mark probably looked like when it was new. After identifying the axe head, I returned it to the vinegar bath for some more soaking. On Tuesday, I removed the head from the vinegar and cleaned it with a wire brush on my drill. This is what it looked like after the cleaning. The handle arrived on Wednesday. 
and I noticed that it had pretty good grain orientation. Then I began the slow process of fitting it to the axe head. I had to repeatedly insert the handle to observe the fit, mark high areas with a pencil, remove the handle, rasp or carve off high areas, and reinsert it into the eye to observe the fit. Since I'm still learning how to do this step, it took me about five hours to fit the handle to the head. When I finally got the handle fitted, I sanded the handle with medium grit sandpaper and then with fine grit sandpaper and then applied two coats of boiled linseed oil, sometimes abbreviated BLO. On Thursday, I soaked the handle neck and the wedge and boil linseed oil, hung the head with a rubber mallet, inserted a wood wedge, cut off the excess handle neck, sanded the protruding end, and then hammered in a metal wedge. After finishing the handle, I made a leather sheath with pieces of leather that were in my workshop. On Friday, I sharpened the bit with a file and then with a fine grit stone. Then I applied Neat's foot oil to the sheath. Here is the finished axe. As you can see from this old photo, there was a spot in my collection for this sized axe. This new photo shows how well it fits into the collection. Well, I hope that you've learned a little bit more about how to restore an axe, and I hope that you would be willing to use an old restored axe as your camp tool sometime in the future. For more information about camp axes, please read my book, Basic Tent Camping. Visit my website, www.basictentcamping.com. And visit my Facebook page, Modern Tent Camping. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go tent camping. <music>